Hi there, I'm Luke. Welcome back to Photo Buy, and today we're checking out the Instax SQ20. Let's get into it. So the Instax SQ20 was announced back in Photokina 2018, and since then we've got our hands on it, we had to play with it to kind of see what it's all about. Now, on the front, it may not look like much has changed from the other Instax cameras that we've seen, but when we turn it around, you'll see there is a screen, a dial, and an on-off switch. Because what you can do with this is digitally take a picture, go through the pictures you like, and then print it out. So essentially, it is an instant printer with a digital camera, and you can link the two together, and you've got this. So it's very good if you're not very confident in taking pictures first time and happy with the result that you get or if you like to edit your pictures and have a bit more of a play around with it, this is a great option. Also, with that being said, if you're someone who wants to shoot digital and film at the same time, and they don't want to be going out and having two cameras with them, they can just get an SQ20. So you can shoot digital as much as you want. There's an SD card in the side here. It is a micro SD, so it will hide just in there along with a charging port. So you can go around, take your pictures, and then if you like some of them, you can print them there and then. So very handy also very handy if you have friends and you want to share the same image as well so what you'll see on the front when you go to turn it on you won't actually see any lens extending because it's all built in you can also control how you zoom by just turning the side to side it has a four time zoom so it'll give you a fair amount but from what we can tell it does look to be digital so when you do zoom in you will see the pixels in, uh, creeping up so do bear that in mind when you go to use it uh, taking pictures you have two choices you got two buttons on the top here so you can hold it with both hands frame it how you want and then take a picture you've still got the mirror on the front so that you can do selfies no matter what hand you use there will always be a thumb ready on the trigger you've got a built-in flash which is very helpful it actually is quite bright for what you use it for especially indoors uh, on the back what we've got is your menu, so you can go in there and you can choose a couple of different options. You can set the flash, you've got self timer, autofocus, illuminator, you then got framing guide, you've got this um, auto print, so it'll print automatically when it takes a picture, you can have that on or off, totally your choice. So those are the main things in the menu setting, so if we just back out of that quickly. What we've also got as well is you can have your exposure compensation control, so you want it darker or lighter, uh, what we find with a lot of Polaroid uh, or Fuji shots when you do take a picture they do tend to be on the overexposed side just seems to be the way that it is but you can change that inside the camera we just go back out of that then on the right here you have a filter option so you can actually change through your saturation you can take control of that make it brighter make it darker or just by turning the dial lastly you got your playback so you can go through your photos see which one you like and you can edit them as well and then lastly you just got your back button just to go back out of things but it's also helpful when you're in playback mode you can actually see what the settings were when you took it so right now it told me the picture i took earlier was a 0.3 plus uh, exposure evaluation taken at the 23rd of the 5th the date seems to be wrong and the 20 at, at two o'clock which is about right so you have got those options for you it's great for time stamping your photos as well so that's very convenient one of the issues we did have is when you do chew through up the battery, you can't take it out and put a new one in because it's internal. So you do have to make sure that you keep it topped up. You can also charge it on the go, it doesn't require that much power. So a semi-powerful battery pack will keep this charged up as you're moving along. One of the new things as well we thought was quite interesting, when you go into the middle mode on the little switch at the top here, you go into motion. Now with that you can record 15 seconds of video, but what the neat thing is about that is you can then go through the 15 seconds of video and find the picture you like and print that out. So you may have seen that um, in cameras that use 4K photo, where you record 4K either a second before or after the shutter or just a 30 seconds longer 4K, and then taking an 8 megapixel still from that, you can do it with this. Now we don't think it'll be 4K, we think it'll be more like 2 megapixels, but given you're not going to expose this up to a 8x10 or a 20x30 canvas, it's only going to be on a small square format instant film, uh, 2 megapixels is going to be more than enough. 
and in this case we wouldn't ask for any more pixels than this i think two megapixels on the video side of things is more than enough for most photos also when traveling it is nice to have a small tripod but annoyingly they haven't got a uh, tripod thread in the bottom for you to put it on a tripod we also found when you go to place it on something flat it does have a tendency to move backwards and forwards because it's very top heavy so do be mindful of that and try not to keep it near an edge and then a gust of wind will catch it because it will fall over so do bear that in mind um, I mean the kind of people that we do see using this are mostly people that are traveling don't want to be carrying two cameras they want a digital camera but they like the film that they also get out of their instant cameras so going with the SQ20 is definitely a good option you do have it available in this um, kind of off pink beige and you also get available in black so you do get do that get that in two colors and it goes for a price of about 180 pounds so if you're thinking instax plus digital it probably will amount to 180 pounds or even more than that so going with this won't be a bad option done so just bear in mind it's not doing an optical print it's actually doing a digital print because this way you can choose what you want and there'll be a little light bar in there that will actually bounce the pixels onto the picture to give you the printout so this isn't going to be an optical picture where you'd have your film sitting in the back like so the light would then hit it it would then be exposed onto the paper then it'll get pushed out this is completely different this is how the fuji printers will work so again still white we'll just leave that in my pocket for now i'm just going to pull out the other one there we go there the other one still developing it does seem to have these little dots on the side there which is a bit strange that's probably the roller pushing it up so we'll just give that a bit more time see what happens still see the dots on that one as well in fact if i show you the back you probably see them a bit better yeah can you see that on the camera those little dots there yeah yeah so that seems to be the roller that pushes it up so we'll just have to keep an eye on that because if it comes out on more pictures that will be a bit more of an annoying thing didn't happen with the last pack i put in there but something to keep an eye on i can see it coming through already so overall we're quite impressed with what instax have done with this uh, it won't be the instant camera for everyone, this is definitely for someone who want a two-in-one sort of design. Uh, we can see there will be a few improvements. One of the downsides would be the battery, we'd like to see that being changed. Uh, maybe improve the screen resolution as well, it was a very simple screen, not very detailed, very hard to see in direct sunlight, which made it very annoying when you're trying to line up your subject to be in the sun and then you can barely see it yourself. And as you can also tell, there was no viewfinder, which again was a bit annoying. However, when you do go to put an electronic viewfinder on there, it does have an issue uh, when it comes to cost, so that would be a bit more. But overall, very happy with what this can do, very good for traveling, and uh, we hope you guys, if you're looking to get one, check it out. We do also have the film available on our Photobyte store, so do check that out as well. And that's our review on the Instax SQ20. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, my name's Luke, this is Photobyte, and we'll see you next time.